So I'm gonna walk you through how I made my storage cabinet. If you are new and have not done a lot of DIY projects, we're on the same page. So I'm a pharmacist, I don't have training in this. This was me just doing a lot of Googling. But if I can do it, don't worry, you can do it too. I was looking online, right? And I was trying to figure out, okay, what can I use? I found on, at Home Depot these Rubbermaid shelves. And the one I ended up getting was the 10 inches deep and it's 72 inches long, so six feet, because I wanted mine to be about five feet and they don't sell in five feet, so I was like, right, I'll just have to like cut it. But look at that. It is $15.98. So I thought that was a great deal because it's already smooth, it looks nice, it has finished edges, and that saves me a lot of time. And at being a newbie and I don't want to have to spend a lot of time doing that, that was awesome. After I found the shelves, then I figured out, all right, what are the different lengths that I need these boards to be to make my frame? And then I used my miter saw to cut them. I ran into like a little bit of trouble because these are 10 inches deep and my miter saw is an eight inch saw. So I had to like flip it over and then cut it on the other side. And then I added some pocket holes with my Craig pocket hole jig. I do have another tutorial on that if you don't know how to use a Craig pocket hole and you would like to. These are the vertical ones and I am putting holes in them right now for me to put these little shelf pins that I have to hold the shelves. I wanted to see how they sat and like the different heights before I made it more permanent with the pocket holes so that's why I added those shelf pins. And now I am putting together those vertical pieces with the horizontal pieces. I was using the special like Craig like right angle clamp that they have, but to be honest, I didn't find it that helpful. Finally adding those shelf hole pins so I could easily slide in the shelves. But making the cabinet doors was actually pretty intimidating to me because I had no idea how I was gonna be able to make that straight cut on plywood. So check out my tutorial on how I was able to do it that track if you're like me and you had never done that before. To get this look for the outside, I used a three and a half by one inch board to get that frame look. And then on the inside, I used this specific fluted molding that I got from Home Depot and I'll link that in the description. Going back to my handy dandy pocket hole jig to put it together before I nailed it onto the plywood and I wanted to prime it and paint it before I nail it on just because I thought that'd be easier for some reason um, and I use construction adhesive to add in those pieces in the middle before adding some wood filler to just get into the little crevices and make it look as smooth as possible before I added those little cuts of that molding that I used to get the fluted look, I ended up underestimating the amount of molding that I needed, so I had to spread them out more than I would have liked to and pray that the caulk that I was going to use to fill it in would sort of mask that error I made, so please learn from my mistakes because it was a lot of caulk. After using two bottles of caulk, it was finally time to paint it, and it was kind of difficult to get in between the little crevices, so I didn't have to go in afterwards with a brush to fill those in better. But after I was doing all this, I did notice that there was some sagging in my shelves. I think it was because they were too long horizontally, so I did decide to add some support because I didn't want the sagging. I thought it didn't really look great. Luckily I had leftover from the frame that I used on the door that I was able to use to put in to support the shelves and then I did end up drilling the shelves in just to make it stronger overall since they were just being supported by those like, shelf pins. And when this was finally done then it was finally time to add the cabinet doors and I used this hinge that I bought from Home Depot that you don't have to have that Craig jig 
that's specific for cabinet doors. So that's why I used the specific hinge that I did. And finally, here is the end product. If you found this video helpful, then you should definitely subscribe to my channel and check out the other tutorials.